My friends, Mr. Mipps reports to me that a detachment of revenue officers is approaching. We have nothing to fear because they will find no smuggled goods in Dibcha. Amen. Their arrival, however, will interrupt my discourse. So I shall ask you to consider the service closed. Well, Squire, Dr. Sin, you do us out of a sermon. We have a living sermon, Sir Anthony. All these good people hurrying home to make a welcome for the stranger within our gate. Very well put, Dr. Sim. Uh, good evening, sir. Mm. Yes, great for you, fellow, and yes, great for you. Fellow. You're looking well, Dr. Pepper. Ah! This infernal marsh egg. I might uh, recommend... Some uh, of your physic. No, thank you. Too much respect for my belly. <laughs> by the by, I expect you to supper. Thank you, but I'd like to be home before dark. It's over the marshes, you see. <laughs> Afraid the marsh phantoms will get him. Uh, well, uh, you come back with me and put a pint of claret under your whisker. That'll keep out the bogies. But isn't it precisely after supper that Dr. Pepper sees his uh, manifestations? On nights of wine and garlands, as the poet has it. So. <laughs> I know what I've seen. Ah, if the harvest is bad, if the wall is poor, if the cattle are sick, it's the marsh phantoms. I've lived on Rumney marshes for five and twenty years, and I've never seen a spook yet. Ah, Dennis! Good day to you, Parson. Good day, Squire. I hope you'll be better at that. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Pepper. Good evening, Parson. 
Oliver Thomas? Why, he's growing quite a young man, Mr. Tuffy. A credit to you. Oh, thank you, sir. So I scraped Master Jerry, do I? I never said nothing, Mr. Rash. It was just the thoughts talking to themselves aloud. Talking to yourself is a very dangerous habit, Master Jerry. I can't help my habits, can I? Perhaps I can. Here I am, Auntie. My auntie wants me. Probably will thrash this little matter out in school. Tomorrow. Come along, Jerry. It's high time we had the bar opened up. Where have you been, you naughty boy? Oh, yeah, sure. Come in. <laughs> You're going to have your hands full, Mrs. Waggetts, when the sailors get here. Too full. A lot of peeping toms. Come in. Dr. Sin. Oh. Imogene, what is it? It's about Mr. Rash. He's going to ask you to call the bands. I see. And you don't want me to? No. Have you told him you don't love him? Yes, but he says I'll learn to. I suppose that's the schoolmaster in him. But perhaps he's right. I don't think you should be hasty. But this has been going on for years and I can't stand him. He's the schoolmaster and a steady man. Yes, sir. Would place you in a good position now, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Rash hasn't asked me anything yet. Let's think it over, eh? Yes, sir. In the meantime, I don't think you should encourage Mr. Dennis. But I don't encourage him. He pays attention to me. But I'm afraid you're paying him back with interest. You see, he'll be going to London and finding a wife in his own class. So to encourage him will only bring you disappointment. Yes, sir. Father asked me to tell you he's expecting you to supper at eight, Dr. Finn. Uh, Dennis, I want a word with you. Yes? You're very fond of Imogene, aren't you? I am. So am I. And we're rivals. You're going back to London. Don't leave her with a broken heart. There's no chance of that. If there's to be a broken heart, it's more likely to be mine. I'm thinking of Imogene's happiness. You mean she's not in my class? Yes. That's an argument as old as the hills, and it doesn't impress me. Uh, Dennis, promise me you'll go away for a month and think it over. I won't go away, Dr. Sin, but I promise you I'll think it over. contraband in the ship in and they never won't. Yeah, no. Mrs. Waggetts wouldn't sell one drop of imported spirits if they hadn't paid its proper duty. Sailors is bad enough, but when they're customs officers as well, I abominate them. Officious nosy parkers. Here, 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 Mrs. Waggetts. You didn't ought to complain, Mrs. Waggetts. Where the sailors, there's trade. And trouble. Where's that girl? Should I know? Is it? what's come over that girl lately, always mooning around. I thought of being Mrs. Rash to stay in her, I expect. Excuse me. I hear there's another beer buzzing around the honey pot besides Rash. A fat lot of good it is a girl in her position thinking of the squire's son. It'd be one of them lovers lane marriages. I've seen too many of them. What are you doing here? You know that it's your father. Never mind him. Can't you give him the slip for a bit? No. No, I can't. Not now. I must go. All right. Don't be long. I'll wait for you on the seawall. Hi, Emilia. I've got something for you. Oh, thank you. Is that all? At least let me put it on for you. All right. How much do I owe you for the mending? Oh, please, nothing at all. The goldsmith couldn't believe they were real pearls. They're so big. He could hardly stop talking about them. On shore duty. But if any one of you horny handed numbskulls takes that as an excuse to relax Navy discipline, I'll flay him. So remember, when you fall out, behave yourselves. And no getting drunk. Dismiss! Hello, hey, now! 
at a time. But don't go chalking up any drinks, or I'll skin the lot of you. Well, well, the answer to a sailor's prayer. Oh, you can laugh. Well, I, of course. How do they call you? The gentleman with politeness and the others with respect. <laughs> Captain Howard Collier of His Majesty's Navy. And I have the honor of addressing Mistress... Imogen. Imogen? Well, I knew an Imogen once. Chased her half round the world for two years. But every time I caught up with her, she gave me the slip. Perhaps you were too rough for your wooing. Oh, not for that, Imogene. She was a ship. <laughs> a pirate ship, flying the black flag of Captain Clay. What are you staring at? I can tie that knot. Good for you, boy. You're going to be a Navy man when you grow up, eh? No, a hangman. I want to string him up and let him down. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have some business for you before I finish here. <laughs> hey, you. Where's the landlord? In the churchyard. Been there a year and a half, and he'll stop there until what time the worms get at you. So I fixed him up solid with my own hands and give him the best pine. Oh, so you're the coffin maker, eh? Aye, sir. Yeah, and you look it. <laughs> well, who is in charge here? I am. Well, madam, kindly show me to the parlor. This way, sir. Thank you. And, uh, bring me a bottle of claret. I'm sorry, we have no fancy French wines here, sir. No wines, eh? Well, a tankard of ale will do. They've had no warning and no time to hide anything. We won't give them time. Fetch the mulatto. Oh, yes, sir. Well, not that way. Bring him round the bed. They have no fancy French wines, eh? Put the yellow ferry to work. I knew it. Clear off that lumber. He's got a nose, and it's a rare one for sniffing out secrets. There ain't no secrets here. Kids are tired for the nets and lamp oil and such like, that's all there'll be. And the secret hat's from the parlor. And a door opening wide without bolt or bar. Opening straight onto the beach. Very convenient. Naturally, we makes it convenient for the fishing. Yes, and other things. Smuggling, for instance. What's this? Par for the nets. And this? White varnish for the oars and fancy pieces. You're sure it isn't White Holland's gin? Draw me a glass of it. Draw you a glass of white varnish? You heard me. Give him a glass. Don't smell like white varnish? Well, it doesn't look like white varnish. <laughs> but it is white varnish. <laughs> well, why couldn't you tell me? Try and drop a tar now, Captain. I haven't finished here yet. Boston, we'll finish this place from top to bottom. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> we did that leap, Mrs. Wagg. It's very neat. <laughs> You're a comfort to me, Mr. Mipps. You are indeed. Yeah, none of that, no, none of that, none of that. A man in the death trade should keep single. He sees enough misery without marrying. Ah, your Stockholm tar does your credit, Mrs. W. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, they didn't find the way to my shop anyhow. Well, they know. Anything? They know the taste of white varnish. At least that's what the captain does. Here. Someone get me a chisel. Here, what are you unpacking them cakes for? Fine, fine, fine. That's best fine. I don't mind lending my caskets for a good cause, but I won't have willful damage. It's a nice bit of grain, that. Yes, I'll be got to get rid of all this liquor. They may be here at any moment. Yeah, hold on, hold on. What are you going to do? Pour it all down the gutter into the sea. Break up the cakes and flow. Did the scarecrow say that? No. You take your orders from me. Then stop unpacking them cakes. We don't act without the scarecrow's orders. Don't take any notice of him. Maybe we'd better wait. Aye, Mips is right. We don't act without the scarecrow's orders. Well, I do. I'm not afraid of him. No, Mr. Rash. Well, I've known the scarecrow for longer than any of you. There's times when I'm mortally afraid of him. I'm waiting. We may wait too long. We've only one life apiece. And if they find this, we may all of us have a rope around our necks. Well, my friends. Uh, what have you been doing here? I, I thought the safest way was to throw everything into the sea. Don't concern yourself with thinking. That's my part. And I see no reason for wasting good liquor. Here, here. It's all very well for you. It's worth your while to take the risk. Is anyone grumbling? Let's understand each other. When I came to Dimchurch, half the population was sick and poor. Now there's no property, and there's a new schoolhouse for the children. That's what I've done with my share of the profits, as you all know. What have you done with yours? I've made better use of the money than the king would have made, and I haven't had to pay any revenue officers. <laughs> <laughs> and that reminds me, I haven't had your accounts for our last transaction. I was meaning to bring them very soon. Well, I'll bring them tonight. Put all this stuff back where it was. And don't let it be moved until I find out what move the revenue officer is about to make. Put on these matches. There you are, boys. Now you're all served. Jerry, look after the bar for a few minutes, will you? What? And leave me alone with all these sailors? Oh, boy! Who do I see about billeting my men? The squire. He's got influence, eh? No, oh, he's got the biggest house. Oh. Come on. Dennis, what do you want to tell me? Because I can't stop. Surely you can spare me a moment. A bar packed with sailors is a full-time job. I've offered you another. Oh, Dennis. You know you can never marry me. Why not? Lots of reasons. Well, give me one. Your father. He'll never allow it. God bless the squire and his relations who keep us in our proper stations. <laughs> you know I'm right. Oh, you throw me out of the house. What then? If you're quick enough with your needle, you can earn a living for both of us. Then we'd starve. Of course, if you prefer three square meals a day and Mr. Rash. Mrs. Waggetts thinks Mr. Rash would be a very good match. Mrs. Waggetts, I thought you told me nothing on earth would ever induce you to marry him. Well, I can change my mind, can't I? Has Dr. Sin been talking to you? Yes, he has, but... But that's got nothing to do with it. And what is it? What's made you change? Is it presents from Rash? What do you mean? You must think me a fool. You keep on telling me you can't bear the sight of him, and then you come here wearing his gifts around your neck like some cheap little... I'm sorry to disturb you, Squire, but the boy says you're the chief magistrate here, and so I... I am, sir. And let me tell you, you'll find no smugglers in this village. Any lawbreakers at Dimchurch answer to me. I wouldn't dream of interfering with your authority. <laughs> oh? Well, what do you want? Your cooperation and quarters for my men. Oh, well, there's nowhere in Dimchurch. Your stables would do. An empty barn or... Or the schoolhouse. And give us a holiday. <laughs> you would think of that, Jerry. This is parcel sin. Captain Howard Collier at your service. Not the Captain Collier who sank the Leon Dor, the mouth of the St. Lawrence? You've heard of me. We are not so outlandish here as not to know something of our national heroes. Now, what about these men of yours? Where are they? Sweepings of Chatham, I'll be bound. They're as fine a body of men as you'll find anywhere. 
I've got the scrum together, sir. They're outside. <laughs> <laughs> there appears to be a difference of opinion. Here, let's have a look at them. <laughs> Bosun, march the men past. Party, turn! Quick, march! Left, wheel! Lord save us, what's that creature? Well, the mulatto, I picked him up in the South Seas. What's the matter? Uh, fingers, it uh, must be a, a touch of the marsh ague. You got it too, you come along to the park. Must have been the sudden cold there. Oh, it's nothing, just carelessness, that's all. Oh, I see. Well, about your men. Ah, oh, yes, the men. Now, you might find room for them in the type bar. I don't think they should be so near the church. Why not? They'll be as near to heaven there as they ever will be. <laughs> Jerry? Yes, sir? Run then and show the men the way to the bar. And I really must be off. I'm feeling rather chilly myself. Sit down, Captain. Dr. Pepper, can we not entice you to change your mind? I hope your men won't be allowed to roam about the village. Oh, particularly that villain without any ear. <laughs> oh, the mulatto. Don't worry about him. We always keep him chained up. This is a wonderful claret. Mm, Chateau Lafitte. From your cellars? Yes, sir, and a very pretty wine it is. And a pretty duty it pays, or it should pay. You're not insinuating, sir. Am I to understand that you suggest that perhaps you like my cellar book? Again, I believe you would. Come, come, Sir Anthony. The captain is only complimenting you on your choice of wines. I hope if you stay long enough, you'll sample my own little stock. I should be pleased. Will you stay long at Dimchurch? Oh, I suppose you'll carry out a thorough search. Rest assured, Parson, if there are any smugglers in Dimchurch, I'll find them. <laughs> Tomorrow I intend to turn every house in the village inside out. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll be very unpopular with my villagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm off. <laughs> Here's a doctor who can't keep his own liver in order and takes a fever looking after us. He dare not go home for fear of ghosts. Oh, how unpleasant. <laughs> According to him, the marshes are haunted by what is it? Phantoms on horseback. And I saw them quite clearly the last time, only three nights ago. Weird, unearthly figures with wispy garments flying in the wind and horrible grinning death's heads riding close by me, only a few feet away, a score or more. Does anyone else see them? No one ever even talks about them. They say it's unlucky. I'll come along home with you tonight. I should like to see these phantoms. Oh, well, if you can hold as much liquor as Dr. Pepper, you probably will. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you why I did see them. Thundering past me like a regiment of cavalry. Somewhat solid for ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Any moment now, he will be saying that it yes, was the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> up with their relatives. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that rock cut for you, my boy. That won't never rock my guts. <laughs> no, you're pretty well lined in the pudding house. There, there's one what hasn't had any yet. You take him a swing. <coughs> Over there. Lovable little darling, ain't he? What's the matter with him? They mutilated his ears, cut out his tongue, and left him to die of thirst on a reef in the South Seas. Who done it? Clegg. Take the pirate. That's him. Ever heard of him? Heard of him. He's ours. We got him buried up in the churchyard. Been there 20 years. I bet they have too. He was ugly, right? Is he dangerous? Oh, he ain't so bad in the ordinary way. But tonight something seems to have upset him. He ain't his usual episode. <laughs> oh, he don't seem to like the look of you. Some people has that effect on him. And when he's like that, he'd as soon slit your throat or claw out a gizzard. <laughs> See you tomorrow, mate. <laughs> Anyway, you are. Oh, no, you're not. Take me the pixie do. Oh, he's got me! Yes, I've got We will now continue our little conversation. Don't hurt me. Oh. One for impertinence in church. Oh. One for breaking my bow. Oh, what was I this guy's? That's all. I haven't done any more. Oh. Really, Mr. Rash. Do you know where you're in? No, Mr. Rash. On the scaffold. I'll be off. Do you know what I'll be doing on that scaffold? Fixing the noose around your ugly neck. Throwing, is he? Guinness. 
All friends? All friends. No re recriminations? No recriminations. Oh, oh, splendid. Uh, well, I re really must be going now. Oh, it's quite time we all went to bed. Gentlemen, I bid you good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Landlord, feel that flowing boat until it does run over. Landlord, feel the flowing bowl till it does run over. Landlord, feel the flowing bowl. I go this way and you go that. That is, if you're really going to see Dr. Pepper across the marshes. Marshes? Confound the marshes. We're all going to the inn. <laughs> you must excuse me. Uh. <laughs> if our friend here ever reaches the inn, he's likely to stay there. Why <laughs> not? What's an inn for? Stay the night. That's what an inn's for. Ah, oh, good night. Good night, Bob. <laughs> Glad to be acquainted, sir. <laughs> Close my eyes, but you're a merry old rogue. Uh, I think you're quite right not to go tramping the marshes at this hour. Marshes tomorrow! No, no do I will merry, merry be. No, oh, do I will merry, merry be. Good night, Parson. Good night, Captain. Good night, Parson. Landlord, come on. Landlord. Pull yourself together. We're going after those phantoms of yours. What, tonight? Yes, now. Uh, I can't. Come on, come on. I'll take you to my room at the inn and give you something to put you on your feet. Will you? Will? Yes, oh. come on. Well, I kept you waiting, Rash. It's near midnight. It's all here, and the accounts in black and white. Good. I've been making friends with Captain Collier. Dr. Pepper has been talking to him about the Marsh Phantoms, and the Captain is getting suspicious. That old fool, Pepper. Where did you leave the noble Captain? Come on. Drink this. It's enough to sober an admiral. And has done. Listen, I believe these phantoms of yours are smugglers. Why? To scare folk off the marches. You, for instance. Oh, maybe smugglers here. Probably are. Well, not what I've seen. Those were spooks. All right, all right, they're spooks. Now, having settled that, where do we find them? Well, uh, let me think. Well, I've seen them in all sorts of places. Now you come to ask me, more often than not, they seem to disappear by an old oast house. Oast house? Yes, where they dry the hops. See them all over, Kent. Give me another admiral. Where are you going? Best to wait and keep your ears open. Now that light. going to take the captain out onto the marshes tonight. I told you to throw it into the sea. Now look what's happened. If Pepper leads the captain to the oast house, it means the gallows for all of us. Pepper don't know nothing about the oast house. Pepper talks too much. He's dangerous. I know what I would do with a dangerous man. It's you that's the danger to us, your white liver. I told you before I had no violence. No offense, but mine herb isn't cast iron. Don't be afraid. Close those shutters. If Captain Collier goes over the marshes tonight, he'll go alone. Dr. Pepper will have an urgent call from a patient. Look at what's the hurry. It's early, eh? I've got to get my men together. What? Come on. Oh, Captain, have you seen... Oh, there he is, Werner. Oh, begging your pardon, Doctor. A message from Disco Farm. Mrs. Fowler says, will you hurry? Mrs. Fowler already. She always were a very previous sort of woman, you know, Doctor. Shall I say you'll be coming? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Oh. You'll be right along. All right. 
It'll take me half the night to reach Disco, but it's the other way. I'm sorry. Then I'll find my own way. How do I get to this haunted host house? You'll be safer in bed, you know. Come on out with it, man. Well, you go up the marsh road to a signpost where it says Ashford 12 miles. Then you take... A uh, length of flannel and dip it in vinegar water and bind it tight around my belly. Thank you, Doctor. I'll do that. Will you write down the prescription for me, Doctor? I don't like doing this. Thank you. I'll have it made up at once. Back already, Herbert? Are we to start? Yes. The scarecrow says right away. Come on, men, we're to start. Ashford, 12 miles. That's right. Follow Ashford Road to Double Dyke Farm. Change course to starboard. Captain. What? There's an host house over there. Rubbish, there's more than one host house in Kent. We've got to turn right here according to the doctor's chart. Come on. Change course to starboard. Forward. March.
That's right, Double Dyke Farm. Turn left a milestone. Change course to Larbert. Quick, march! It ain't much further, Captain. My bunions is giving me trouble. Oh, you think too much about your bunions, Boson. Maybe I do, Captain, but you've got a horse. Whoa! 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 Join the Navy to see the world, but I never thought we'd have to paddle around it. We must be nearly there. If we ain't, we'll be putting the oars out soon. signpost over there, sir. Let's have a look at it. I don't see how that'll help. Well, I'll be scuppered if it ain't. And there's the tree. We've been off round Kent and we're back where we started. There's the scarecrow. I believe I saw it move. How could it, sir? That's what I was wondering. Good morning, Prudence. Good morning, sir. Lift, 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 lift. Uh, Prudence, a lay breakfast for two. For two, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Fine morning, Captain. Getting up an appetite? Yes. Care for a bite of breakfast, Captain? No, thanks. Pity. We have grilled kidneys and bacon. Hold! Carry on, boat. Quick march. I see you've been sampling our marsh mud. It is very deep in places. Yes. The people on it are a sight deeper. I'd like to ask you a few questions about some of your parishioners over breakfast. <laughs> Arson! Arson! The yellow hole has broken loose. He says he's seen the mulatto. He's going along towards the marshes, making awful faces. He must have slipped his cable while we was away. They must be found. Pipe all hands and no rest for good time. <laughs> What's that? Had no idea. Look! Captain Clegg's harpoon's gone. What's the boy say? Clegg's harpoon? Parson had it given to him by Captain Clegg. Uh, memento. I attended the rogue in his last hour. The boy says he was buried here in Dimchurch. Is that right? Yeah, quite right. Captain Clegg repented his sins, and I was able to obtain for him a Christian burial. Well, we can't have the mulatto running loose with that weapon. He's not safe. We must find him. The boy will show us where he saw him. We'll fill into parties and search them out. What a dying. Use every effort, Captain. with hunting the phantoms all night and looking for the mulatto all day, my bandits all... We've seen him, sir. I belong with the churchyard. Come on, Boston. Now I've got to play wet nurse to him. Over there, sir. Here. What are you doing? I see a coffin. It's full of stone and muck. You mean there's nobody there? No, and if you ask me, there never has been one. What do you make of that? I don't know. Leave it be. Make everything good. And not a word to anybody. I wonder how he came for all those golden guineas. If you ask me, there's queer goings on in Dimchurch. What was that? It was me. That wasn't. I couldn't get here earlier. I was busy. And how was the lady at this gold farm? Oh, stupid woman. There was no need for me at all. No, I thought so. What, you don't mean that? Yes. What's more, I put a bullet through a scarecrow. Andrew Blood. What are you putting your eye to the knot hole for, Jerry Joke? You can't hear with your eye. Put your ear on. I will. Pepper, you're going to take me to that oast house. And tonight there must be no mistakes. We'd better not be seen together. Anyway. I'll meet you outside the village by the first signpost. I'll give you 15 minutes. All right. Uh. You've had enough of that. We'll need our wits about us. When I unearth these smugglers, I have a shrewd idea and I'll turn up a far side more.
mere squeak. Hey, my onions went back on me. What was that, Jerry? It's Dr. Pepper. If it hadn't have been for that onion, you'd have known something about something, Jerry Jer. It's old scrape gut rash. He's following Dr. Pepper. I wonder what he's up to. Well, you fool, follow him and see. I will. Something's up. Something's gonna happen. You found him yet, Jerry Jerk, my lad? Rounded Marsh. Ah. I had a hard job to catch you. Well, what is it? I'm going your way. I thought you would like company. Yes, but I'm in a hurry. Well, I can keep up with you on Meg. Uh, where are you going to this time of night? Where are you going? Well, I'm not supposed to say, but I'm going to meet Captain Collier. What are you up to with the captain? I promised to take him to the Oast House by Double Dyke. What for? Rash, those horsemen I saw are not spooks, but smugglers. You're mad. Cork sent me. Look, there they are. I see nothing. Then heaven help me, there must be something wrong with my soul. Well, you'll soon know. on Mr. Skinner only last evening. Hoogliff done it. The poor Dr. Pepper. Oh, there's the parson. My friends. Dr. Sin, isn't this terrible? If you want to know my opinion... I don't want to hear any opinion. We must all wait until the matter is investigated by the proper authorities. Now all go and get on with your work. That's right. Come on, Jerry. School bell's going. Hurry, I'll come in from Mr. Rash. Oh, no, I won't. You tell Mr. Rash I know all I want to know. All I want to know, I know. You'll be late. Don't know if I'm coming to school this morning. Did I hear Jerry? Playing truant? I've got to tell the captain something. What have you got to tell the captain? I'm not saying nothing to no one. What happened to Dr. Pepper is the captain's business. What do you know about it? I saw the whole thing. Are you telling the truth? Am I a liar? Sometimes, but not now. I was out in the marshes last night, and I seized Mr. Ash, but I ain't going to tell anybody but the captain. Uh, Jerry, uh, suppose you come into the vicarage and tell me what you're not going to tell anybody but the captain. Well, uh, all right, so long as I don't tell everybody but the captain. Brandon. You're drinking early, Mr. Rash. Dr. Pepper never done no one any harm. No one but a cow could murder a man that way. I've spoken against the captain, you've heard me, but a powerful good thing he's here, he's sharp he is, he'll catch him. I tell you, I did see it. No, no, Jerry. You had nightmare, that's all. Too much supper. No, sir, I had nothing for supper, except a piece of cheese, and some pickled onions, a slice of bread and dripping, and a portion of pudding, and a slice of pie. I thought as much. Nightmare. How come my boots to be covered in dark mud this morning? Oh, walking in your sleep. Do you realize what a grave charge you're making? I do. You might be the cause of hanging Mr. Rash for something he hadn't done. You wouldn't like that, would you? I don't know. No. We must be positive first. We must wait. If I was to wait till I growed up, and got my job as a hangman, would it still be in time? Of course. Then I'll wait. Good. And now, Jerry, you must promise me not to say to anyone until I find out for certain that what you say is right. Here are uh, two half crowns for you. <laughs> now run along. And Jerry, remember, whatever you saw, you dreamt. I'll remember. I never saw Mr. Ashstick, Dr. Pepper in the back. It was all a dream. All but the two half a crown. Rash.
Imogene. The captain's out on the marshes, Mr. Rash. I'm not looking for the captain. I want to speak to you. I'm thinking of leaving Dimchurch. I hope you're not doing that on my account. Yes, it is on your account. It wouldn't be much of a life for you, the wife of a village schoolmaster. So, I've decided to seek a post in London. You'll be happier there. Are you suggesting that I should elope with you? Boy, you're much too beautiful to be wasted on a country tavern. Do you think so? A wife of mine mustn't be at the beck and fall of common sailors. But I haven't said I'd marry you yet, Mr. Rash. But that's understood. Not by me. Are you refusing me? I'm sorry. You don't really believe old Cobtree would allow his son to marry a girl like you, with your name? What's wrong with my name? Nothing. Except that it isn't yours. What are you saying? You don't remember your father, do you? He was a sea captain. So Mrs. Waggett's told you. But he wasn't the sort of sea captain you would imagine. Did you ever hear of Captain Clegg? The notorious pirate who was hanged at Rye? He wasn't my father. You poor child. It's a lie. Very well then, go to Dr. Sin and ask him. I will. But it's not true. I know it's not true. <laughs> Good day, Imogen. Lovely weather, not a cloud in the sky. In fact, a perfect day for making up a quarrel. Oh, come now, be reasonable. You know I didn't mean what I said the other night. Dennis, I'm sorry I quarreled with you, and, and I'm sorry I hit you, but... Goodbye. What do you mean, goodbye? I've just heard something. What have you heard? Prudence! Who's been tampering with his desk? Tampering, sir? The lock's broken. Someone's been prying into my private papers. Who is it? Not, not me, sir. Let me look at you. Oh, sir, I've never seen you like this before. Oh. I'm sorry. I know you wouldn't deceive me. Forgive me. Open the door. Yes. Can I see Dr. Sim, please? Yes, miss. He's in his study. Oh, thank you. Dr. Sim, can I speak to you a moment, please? Of course, come in. What is it? Is it true that my father was Clegg the pirate? Who have you been talking to? Mr. Rash. Rash? Is it true? Yes, my dear, it is true. Oh. Your father was a strange man, a man of conflicting powers for good and evil. They battled for possession of his soul. I knew something of that struggle towards the end. If you were here now, I don't think you would feel that he was an evil man or a criminal. The one woman who knew him loved him to her last day. That was your mother. Did you know her? He spoke so much of her. That cross I gave you was hers. She wore it on the day she was married. Perhaps you will, too. I'll never marry him. He's so self-righteous. What, Dennis? Dennis? You love him, don't you? Yes. But we've quarreled. It was over this cross. He thought Mr. Rash had given it to me, and he was furious. He said something, and I hit him. You hit him? <laughs> A chip of the old block. <laughs> you, you hit him. And then you still love him? Yes. But it's impossible now. Yes. I'm afraid it is. my boy if you love Imogene there's something you ought to know what else is there to know you know nothing about her family her father no but she knows all about my father and that's enough for both of us her father was Captain Clegg Captain Clegg yes 
Clegg the pirate. Now what do you say? Marvellous. Clegg the hero of my school days, and you his daughter. Danny! Then it doesn't make any difference. I should say it does. Now we'd be able to hoist the skull and crossbones on our family tree. Oh. Won't your be pleased? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. I thought you had. <laughs> This is a note to an old friend of mine in Canterbury. He will arrange a special license. If you ride hard, you can reach there tonight. And shall we say 12 o'clock tomorrow for the ceremony, uh, before you tell your father? Dr. Sin, you're a regular old sinner. Thank you, sir. Now, hurry. Goodbye, Imogen. I told you it was a perfect day for making up a quarrel. You've always been so kind to me. Perhaps because I knew you were the daughter of your father. Count your minutes, Mr. Rash, because you ain't gonna count no bags of gold where you're going to. They melt anyway. Are you ready, Mr. Hangman Jerk? No, but I will be in a minute, Mr. Sheriff. Well, hurry up then. All right. Two more and she's home. Is it a quartering job, Mr. Sheriff? Aye, aye, Hangman. Drawing and quartering. So you're hanging your schoolmaster, eh, Mr. Jack? Did I say so? You did, but schoolmasters don't have bags of gold, my boy. That's all you know. I've seen them. Piles of them. And I see him give Imogene a pearl cross. He did? Yes, he did. Great big pearls they were. And where did he get the price of them? That's what I'd like to know. Yes, so would I. young lady, but I'd like to ask you a question. I understand you have a piece of jewellery, a, a gold chain with a... Oh, here it is. Where did you get it from? What's that to do with you? Come now, Mr. Rash gave it to you, didn't he? No. Well, who did? It was given to me at my confirmation by Dr. Sin. Dr. Sin? Oh, thank you. Come in. Good evening, Dr. Sin. I understand you want to see me. Someone has broken the lock of that desk in search of information. I gather you're referring to me. And having obtained that information, you use it to try and break a girl's spirit. And I've succeeded. Imogene will marry me and you will perform the ceremony. You're very sure of yourself. I've only to say a word to the captain. But you won't say it. Why not? Because you murdered Pepper. That's a lie. I didn't murder him. As a witness, somebody was watching you when you stabbed Dr. Pepper in the back. You wouldn't dare accuse me. You would swing within a week if I told the authorities that our sainted vicar was Captain Clegg. Imogene will marry me to save your neck. What's the matter here? Ah, oh, Captain, oh, please help me. I'm unboundedly thankful to see you. Your yellow man's all but killed my friend here. It's Rash. Uh, I'm afraid he's badly hurt. Oh, we must staunch this blood. Uh, there's some linen in a drawer over there, my good man. Uh, well, uh, please give him air. How did it happen? Oh, we were sitting here, uh, quietly talking over parish affairs when... Oh, thank you. I'll do it, sir. No, oh, thank you. When in leapt your mulatto and attacked Mr. Rash. Well, I threw the first thing I could at him, but it all happened so uh, suddenly, and then the sight of blood took my wits away. And, oh, was it, was it Hannibal or Hamilcar who couldn't stand the sight of blood? Uh, some great general. Let's get the hang of this. Well, the only warning was a terrible cry. He'll do now, sir. 
I'd better get him upstairs. No, I'll look after him. We'll take him to the inn. I think you should leave him here in my care. No, I think I'll look after him myself. Take him to the inn. Be careful. That's all right, sir. This is what is known as the boozer's oist. Dr. Sin, I would like you to tell me something further about this. I'll come over to the inn later. Perhaps you'll take supper with me. Then we'll say eight o'clock. Mips. Go down to the inn and tell Mrs. Waggetts that Captain Collier must not be allowed to talk to Rash. What does Rash know? Something that you know. That you're Clegg? Yes. And that I'm your old ship's carpenter? No. You have a clean bill of health. You are still the village carpet maker. Quick. Sleeping peaceful and no thanks to you always popping in and out. Can he talk? That I don't know and I'm not going to wake him up to find out so you can go downstairs and twiddle your tongue. Oh, coffee. stop your cackling. Let me know when he oh, can talk. Out. Benedictus Benedicta. Amen. <clears throat> Tell Mrs. Waggetts that she has excelled herself. Yes, sir. It always surprises me how she gets so many birds under one crust. She's a dim church woman, and what goes on under the crust of this village would surprise anyone. You haven't been able uh, to find any smugglers yet, though, have you? No. But there's been a murder and other diversions, such as the attack on Rash. Well? If Sin had been in that rig, he'd have been a dead one. If you ask me in a manner of speaking, he's as good as. Come on. But why should the mulatto attack Mr. Rash? That's what puzzles me so. Perhaps Rash can explain that himself. He must be either dead or better by now. <clears throat> it worked. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll talk to Rash now. His evidence might interest the coroner at the inquest tomorrow. I'll come with you. Uh, no, I'll see him alone. I'm really very anxious about him. He might not talk in front of you. He might not. On the other hand, he might need my spiritual guidance. I think I'll come. You sure this is the room? is this, Mips? How should I know? You can stand down, Mr. Mips. It is evident he knows nothing. Very well, Mr. Coroner. But I still maintain that the two bodies upon which you're holding this inquest, Dr. Pepper and Samuel Rash, met their deaths as the result of quarreling amongst smugglers. Mr. Coroner, I say there is no smuggling in this village. I wouldn't allow it. Then what about the spooks that Dr. Pepper saw? Spooks? The phantom riders. I'm afraid my jurisdiction does not extend to the supernatural. But these apparitions have been seen by other villagers. The marsh riders have become an acknowledged tradition. What foundation is there for that? Huh. Village alehouse, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> then what is your theory about Dr. Pepper's death? Dr. Pepper was a man who often had to cross the marshes at night to attend distant patients. On two occasions, Dr. Pepper saw these riders disappear at a certain spot, which he was on his way to show me when he was murdered. Is it not possible, Squire, that smuggling might be going on without your knowing it? Absolutely impossible. I presume you're not accusing the Squire of smuggling? No, I am not. But I say there is an elaborate organization in this village with a leader who has been clever enough to invent this legend of the marsh riders. He's probably in this room now. Nonsense. 
They were seen by no one of standing. I never saw the naughty Dr. Thin. And if there were any smuggling, surely he would know something about it? Perhaps he does. That is a most uncalled for remark. Without giving you the trouble of coming into the witness box, will you tell us, Dr. Sin, whether you have any suspicions of smuggling in Dimchurch? If there is any, I'm afraid I've never profited by it. <laughs> there is no answer to the question. Uh, you have no cause to suspect any of your parishioners. Uh, well, sir, the squire often sends me an excellent bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I shall not prolong this inquiry further. It is evident to me that the mulatto seaman is the one person involved in these murders, and I shall adjourn this inquest until such time as he has been apprehended. Then if you don't wish to ask me any further questions, I have some important duties. Certainly, Doctor. One moment. With your permission, Mr. Coroner, I shall like to ask Dr. Sin to clear up one or two points. I think we've already given you every opportunity. I am paid by His Majesty's government to uncover smuggling. But Dr. Sin has told you already that he knows something about any smuggling. No, he has not. He has evaded the question. Really, Captain? Uh, Dr. Sin, would you mind? Please be brief, Captain. Dr. Sin, I understand you have been vicar of this village for many years. Yes. How many? Well, I should say... Very nearly 20, isn't it? About that. And what were you before you came here? A comparatively young man. <laughs> I want a straight answer. I think the question is hardly relevant. And why not? Have you got Blackstone there? Laws of evidence. Mr. Coroner, I protest. The captain is wasting the time of the court. It's perfectly obvious to everybody that the murders were committed by his mad mulatto. Who said he's mad? His behavior points to it. Do you remember when you first saw him? Yes. When you came to the squires to billet your men. You were holding a wine glass and it broke in your hand. Yes. I had a touch of the marshy. Oh. You also think the mulatto killed Rash? In my own mind, I have no doubt of it. He tried to kill him in my study. And having failed there, he carried him off and hanged him. Rash, I believe, was engaged to the girl at the inn. I believe he wished to marry her. Did you approve? It was not for me to approve or disapprove. But you took a great interest in her? I take a great interest in all my parishioners. You gave her a most valuable pearl cross. Yes, at her confirmation. Where did you get it from? Let me have volume three. Oh! What do you want those books for? Why, for my defense. <laughs> I don't think I'm bound to answer that question. Perhaps I can help you to the answer. Did you know Captain Clegg? I visited him in prison on the day of his execution. He gave you a harpoon as a souvenir. Perhaps he gave you the cross, too. Perhaps. Who knows? What sort of a man was he? A strange man. Yes. He knew a great deal about the law, too. He studied it as a young man and became a brilliant lawyer, but was struck off the roll. Clegg's ship was named Imogene, the same name as the girl you gave the cross to. A strange coincidence. Yes. There is a story that Clegg's wife was attacked by a mulatto, and she killed herself. Clegg left the mulatto to starve on a coral reef. This same mulatto. Do you think the mulatto would be likely to recognize Clegg again? I should say highly probable. Do you agree it would be natural for the mulatto to want to seek revenge? Yes. Are you aware that I had an effigy made and placed it in a chair, and the mulatto returned with a stolen harpoon, and threw it at the effigy, thinking to pierce the heart of Clegg. Clegg was hanged as right. He was never hanged. The effigy I had made was of you, Dr. Sin. Clegg's grave in a churchyard is empty. There's a bandage on your wrist that covers, I swear, the wound I made when I shot the living scarecrow. <laughs> the head and brains of these smugglers is Dr. Sin. And Dr. Sin is none other than Captain Clegg the pirate. But take him. Wait! Wrong, Captain. Clegg was hanged, but not hanged till he was dead. He had many friends, and the rope was rotted with strong acids. But no man can stand on the gallows without coming face to face with his soul. On that day, truly, the old Clegg died. And what the new Clegg has done, you all know. I found you in wretchedness and poverty deprived by harsh laws and heavy taxes of the simple comforts 
all men have a right to. I took upon myself to change all that at the expense of the revenue. What I did, I did for the good of all. And I stand by your decision. <laughs> With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And with all my worldly goods. And with all my worldly goods. I thee endow. I thee endow. You said I'd wear this the day I was married. Just as my mother did. Just like your mother. And you're going to be very happy. I don't know why I'm crying. It's not very flattering to me. No, I'm going to take all the flattery to myself. They're coming. Who's coming? It's all right, my boy. It isn't your father. Goodbye, Goodbye. Dennis. Goodbye, my dear. I watch you grow up, and I feel almost like a father who's losing his only daughter. Goodbye, my child. He's here! Quick! He's here! Captain Clegg, you're under arrest. Clegg! Men. Break it down! Get out of the Boys, get out those cases of gunpowder. I'll break them open. Is the tunnel clear, Mips? Anyone following? Not yet, sir. But there soon will be. Get out as quick as you can. We've only a few more minutes at most, sir. Yes, but we have those minutes. Stand clear! We're going to leave no trace. We don't get any of our friends into trouble. We'll blow up the old house, and every shred of evidence goes up with it. <laughs> 